Now for this last part it's a very simple step just to resolve now to the right to get P. If we resolve to the right, let's just mark this in, considering the force is to the right, then what we've got is all of P acts to the right. So we'll have that as P. Uh, if we go round to this force, the weight, none of this acts in the horizontal direction because it's perpendicular to that direction, so we can ignore the weight. When we come round to the friction, then part of this friction is going to act in the horizontal sense. We've seen that that frictional force can be split into two components. We're not interested in the one that's going downwards because that would be perpendicular to the horizontal. We're just interested in this component of the friction. And because it contains the angle, it's going to be one third R cos alpha, as we saw here. As I said earlier, I don't normally draw these diagrams. It's just there just to give you an idea what's going on. So we've got minus a third R cos alpha, and it's it's acting in the opposite sense to the positive sense here, so it's going to be minus, minus one third R. We could put the value of R in if you like, or you could just leave it as R for the time being. One third R cos alpha. Now we go on to R, and R is inclined to the horizontal, so we need to take into account what components of R contribute to the force to the right. Well, R can be split into two components, as we saw here. The one upwards, R cos alpha, well that's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in, so it'll have no effect. We're just interested in this one. That would be R sine alpha, acting in that direction. But it's opposing this positive sense, so it's going to be minus, minus R sine alpha. So there are all the forces taken care of, and that resultant force is equal to zero because the particle is in equilibrium. Now all we need to do now is just simplify this. So we've got P minus one third R cos alpha. That would be one third. The cosine of alpha is four fifths, adjacent over hypotenuse, so I'll mark that in as four fifths. And then we've got the R. Minus R sine alpha, sine of alpha is opposite over hypotenuse, three fifths, so you've got minus three fifths of R, and that equals zero. So if we work this out, minus four fifteenths we've got here, minus a further three fifths. Well, if you do that, you end up with thirteen fifteenths. So we've got therefore P minus thirteen fifteenths of R equals zero. Add thirteen fifteenths to R to both sides, you then get P equals thirteen fifteenths of R. But at this point we know that R is 6.53 recurring. We worked that out in the previous part. We could have substituted that in earlier, I know, but I've just decided to leave it till now. So we've got 6.53 and so on, okay, in there. And if you work that out, you end up with 5.662 and so on, which, say, if we round up to three significant figures, is going to be 5.66 newtons then to three. SF, three significant figures. So I hope that's given you uh, some idea then how to go about this problem and why it was so much better to consider vertical and horizontal directions. All right.